This segment of the Alice Stewart Show is brought to you by Aero Plumbing. For all your household or business plumbing needs, call Aero Plumbing at 1 866 Plumber or schedule an appointment online at aeroplumbing.net. And we're back on the Alice Stewart Show, 7.35 on a beautiful sunny Thursday morning here. And we are pl- pleased to be joined with our fine Senator John Bozeman, who joins us live on the phone. Senator, good morning. Well, good morning to you, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm glad you could join us. There's so much going on right now in, in Washington, even with things on recess, some trickle over from uh, last week. And I want to ask you about one of the, the big situations we're keeping an eye on that is the the crisis at the border the the immigration issue we have uh, as listeners know tens of thousands of uh, illegal immigrants uh, coming into this country and it's become a the administration says it is now a humanitarian crisis and they've asked for uh, significant funding to address this but the i feel the best way to handle a major situation like this is to go there and see it firsthand and you did you went down and you uh, went to a trip to the border uh, there in Texas. And what what did you see and, and how how was the, the situation on the border firsthand? Well, it really is a humanitarian crisis in the sense that you have lots of uh, people that are destitute trying to get into our country. Uh, I think it's also a national security crisis also in the sense that the border is very porous. Uh, you've got people coming from literally all over the world uh, trying to get in. And so the good news is is that the numbers have started to come down. And the reason that they're coming down is, and in talking to the border guards and talking to the, all of the officials down there from, the, you know, from the, the lowest to the highest, everybody agrees that the only way to stem the tide is to adjudicate the people as quickly as possible and then get them on a, a flight or a means of transportation back to their own country so that uh, people can see that they're not going to be allowed to stay. And what about the the idea? This is one thing that was the president met with leaders of three of the central uh, Central American com- countries. They talked about the idea of having them seek asylum in their home country before coming here, so that process can be handled before they even get here. Y- your thoughts on that? Well, I think you could do that, and and you know, truly, if you did it in a legitimate way, uh, you know, following the law and things, there's really not that many people that qualify. So that that would be a method of doing it. I, I don't think, though, that he would shut off the other. And so until uh, people, in the old days, until recently, uh, people would call home and say, you know, I'm, I'm was apprehended at the border, or I gave myself up at the border, and now they've, uh, you know, they've let me go, I'm in the United States. Now they're calling home saying, I'm in a detention center and going to remain in a detention center. Don't come up. Uh, That's the message that we have to, you know, that we have to send no matter how we do it. And that that is key, Uh, what what is being communicated back to to their home country. And there on the border, we see images on, on the news and we hear elected officials talk about what's going on on the border and the administration paints this as a humanitarian crisis these babies and children coming in but you saw a little a different group of folks coming it wasn't all babies and small children what what age group and what kind of folks did you see with your own two eyes coming across the border well most of the most of the people are, are mid teenagers to uh, older teenagers young people uh, or adults uh, so there are some family units uh, and things, but but the vast majority are uh, older teenagers, uh, mid teenagers. What's happening is is that because uh, you know until recently they were calling home saying it's safe, come on up, you'll get get released into the United States. The coyotes, uh, most of the people that we saw had paid anywhere from four thousand to twenty thousand dollars to have these people uh, transport them up. And so it's become a, an organized crime uh, way of uh, raising money, and uh, it simply has to be shut off. Absolutely. And and that's the humanitarian thing to do uh, in the sense, you know, certainly we need to treat everybody with, you know, kindness and, and make sure they're taken care of while they're in custody. But the bottom line is the only way to deal with this is to send uh, back those that don't have legitimate reason for being here. Right. And this is uh, certainly become a 
some say humanitarian crisis, and I agree with you, a national security issue. President Obama had requested to deal with this $4 billion, basically $3.7 billion in emergency funding to deal with this influx of illegals into this country. You did not support that bill. Uh, you did, however, support the Senate bill, which would uh, much lower, $2.7 billion, addressing not quite all the issues that that one did. What did the, your what was it in the president's request that you did not support, and why were you supportive of the Senate version? Well, I, to be honest, I wasn't supportive of any of it, and uh, the reason being is is that the president wanted a blank check, and uh, there was no plan in there as to you know how they were going to deal with the the influx. There was nothing uh, in regard to. Uh, uh, increasing the security on the border, actually fixing the problem. And so as a result, that's why there was uh, really uh, not a lot of support in Congress. Uh, even the uh, the Democrats that, that staunchly supported the president were very concerned about this because, again, uh, it, was, it was simply a blank check and did nothing about uh, clearing out the backlog of people that are in line uh, waiting to be adjudicated. Uh, it did nothing for the border. Uh, so it simply was a bad deal, especially since, as far as the humanitarian aspect, taking care of people, uh, they really needed, uh, you know, just uh, uh, in the millions of dollars uh, to get them by into the next fiscal year. One last question on this illegal immigration issue. In the president yesterday held a, a news conference after the Africa summit and was asked about this. And he said, as he has said many times, that since... Uh, members of the House and members of the Senate have failed to act on this uh, immigration crisis, which is not true. You you both have passed versions of bills. He may be forced to act alone, as he has done before, bypass Congress and issue an executive action dealing with illegal immigration. Do you think he will do that, and what will his action be? Well, I hope he doesn't do it because it's not constitutional. The president can act when he doesn't feel like uh, he's getting his own way with Congress. So uh, that would be a significant problem uh, and, and maybe even cause a constitutional crisis. The other problem is when you look at the spike of, of kids coming up from the border, uh, from other countries in Central America, it started with, the, uh, with his executive action on the DREAM Act kids allowing those kids to, to stay and actually giving them work permits. Right. And so if he does this with adults, I think, uh, and again, in talking to the uh, the Border Patrol agents, the guys on the ground, uh, you know, they felt, I feel like, this would create a massive uh, in, influx or potential influx, a massive, massive another crisis on the border just with adults uh, trying to get across to be part of that uh, amnesty program. Um, so I'm, I very much oppose it, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not good policy. And it will be interesting to see. There was word this morning that he was planning to come back from Martha's Vineyard early to have meetings, and I, I, I anticipate something uh, in the near future on that. Well, I hope not. Like you say, he can, he can meet and do this and that. The bottom line is that he simply doesn't have the authority, and along with that, it's, it's terrible policy. Right. All right, we will take a quick break, and we'll come back and discuss other big, important topics that you're still dealing with while you're on recess. Join with Senator John Bozeman. We'll be back with more on The Alice Stewart Show. This segment of the program brought to you by Aero Plumbing. For all of your household or business plumbing needs, call Aero Plumbing, 1-866-PLUMBER, or schedule an appointment online at aeroplumbing.net. 